All right, so this will be the last video that we have time for today. Um, in the last video, we, we kind of recap this idea of, well, if you have a function defined along a curve, right, then you can define this, this arc length integral, right? So there's this idea of uh, the integral of, of f ds, right, as this integral from a to b, f of r of t times the length of r prime of t times dt, right? That this is this, uh, this kind of integral with respect to arc length, right? In the last video, we talked about how you can also, um, you can define these integrals rather than, than integrating with respect to arc length, you can also integrate with respect to the coordinate variables individually, right, x, y, or z. Um, and you can even do these in combinations. And then we said, oh, hey, well, you know, pqr sounds, sounds a little bit like a vector. Um, so what happens if instead of, you know, instead of given a curve and a parameterization and a function along that curve, um, what if you have a vector field? So you have a vector field f, right, given by, let's say, pi, qj plus rk, um, this defined along our curve. Um, what can we do with that? Well, one of the things that you can do is along the curve, you can define the unit tangent at every point, right? So you have this idea of t. So t being the unit tangent. Okay, so we can, we can define that for any curve. We can define the unit tangent. Uh, well, we do need one more thing, right? We need now an orientation on our curve. We need to have some notion of, of beginning and ending, right? So the idea that the curve is traced out in a particular direction, right? Because we need to know which direction the tangent vector should point, this way or, or that way. So we need to know which way we're moving along the curve, right? So now we kind of, we have this change we also need this notion of this being an oriented curve, okay? Um, so once you've got the curve, once you work out the unit tangent for the curve, and you've got your vector field, um, you can get the tangential component which is given by f dot t, okay? So the, the, the tangential component of your, of your vector field f, okay? So the idea is that if your vector field f is, you know, it's along the curve somewhere, let's get a different color. So it'd be along the curve, your, your vector field f looks, you know, maybe it's doing something, I don't know what it's doing. Maybe it's kind of rotating as it goes around, right? It's doing something. Um, it's going along like that, but at every point, you can, you can take your vector field F, right? So here's, here's F at that point. Here's your, your T. And you can take F and you can, you can project it onto T, right? And you can work out how much of F points in the direction of the curve, right? So really what you're interested in here is for a given vector field along the curve, how much of the vector field points in the direction of the curve, how much kind of points orthogonal to the curve, right? Um, the only part, it's gonna turn out, the only part that contributes to the integral of a vector field along a curve is the tangential component, okay? So you can do these problems where if somebody, if somebody draws the vector field and draws a curve in that vector field, um, you can get a rough idea of the value of the line integral, uh, right, the integral of the vector field along that curve, just by kind of looking and seeing, okay, at most points, is the vector field pointing in the same direction as the curve? Is it pointing opposite? Is it pointing perpendicular to the curve? Um, right, so if you had a vector field that was, that was normal to the curve at every single point, the, the integral of the vector field is going to be zero. If the vector field is tangent to the curve at every point, um, well, then you're going to get something that's a little bit more like this, right? So you, you play around and you, you look at the different cases. Um, now, 
The tangential component, of course, is just a, it's a scalar, right? Once you take this dot product, you have a scalar. Um, and so you can define an integral along C of that tangential component. And you could do it with respect to arc length, because that's how we've been doing integrals, right? Um, we've, so far, we've been doing our integrals with respect to arc length. We have this idea that there's this other way to do things, but so far, this is the main way we've done integrals. Right? So this dot product gives me a scalar. I know how to integrate scalars, so you can go ahead and you can do it. But if you think about it for a second, you say, well, wait a sec. You know, if, if, I, if I choose my parameterization right, in terms of my parameterization, r of t, there's two things I know. One thing I know is that the unit tangent now becomes r prime over the length of r prime, right? And I know that, as always, ds is the length of r prime times dt. Well, those are, those are kind of coming here together in sequence, right? f dot t times ds. Um, seems like maybe computing this magnitude of, of r prime is, is a length of time. R waste of time. Length of time. Ha. Huh. It's a waste of time. Right? Because what, what happens? So what happens is that the integral along c, f dot t, ds, once you parameterize, becomes the integral from a to b, f of r of t, okay, dotted with r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime, okay, times the magnitude of r prime, oops, sorry, that should be magnitude, times dt. So you step back a bit, and you're like, wait a sec, wait a sec. Um, I never really needed that magnitude. It cancels, right? So I get something that looks like the integral from A to B of F of R of T dotted with R prime of T times dt, okay? And, and this leads to the way that we more often write down a line integral for a vector field. We don't usually write it down like this. Usually what we do is we write something that looks like this. f dot dr, okay? So what's dr? Well, if you think of, if you think of r, right, as, as this usual, you know, um, xi plus yj plus zk, that, then it seems reasonable that dr should be dxi plus dyj plus dzk, right? Um, and, and so then f being, you know, pqr, what happens when you take the dot product, f dot dr? Well, you're going to get P times dx, Q times dy, R times dz. Um, you get exactly this. You get this, this differential form that popped up um, in the previous video, right? Um, and, and notice that, you know, if, we, if you combine these all together, P dx, Q dy, R dz, and you parameterize, um, you are going to get exactly this, right? F dot R prime, integrate with respect to T and that's going to do the job. All right, uh, that's how you set up a line integral. We'll do some computational examples in class. We don't have time to do them this week in the videos. Uh, one thing I should mention before we, before we end, um, we should say something about what are you actually doing when you compute this line integral. And, and again, I know for the non-physics people, I give everything in terms of a physics interpretation. Um, uh, that's not necessarily my fault. It, it's that most of this mathematics was developed in order to do physics. 
Um, it was developed in order to do a lot of kind of Newtonian physics in three dimensions. Um, and, and the physics that you're doing here is the physics of work, right? Um, so there's this idea that if you, if you have a force acting on an object and that force carries the object through some distance, okay? So for example, if you transport something along a curve um, through the action of a force, um, the work, so work is a measure of kind of the, the energy that you have to expend to do this, to move this object. Um, the work done is, is computed by kind of calculating the component of your force in the direction of motion, right? Along a straight line, it's exactly that. It's just F dot with D, right? Um, F dotted with displacement, that gives you the work done. Um, and if you're moving something over, over a curved path, well, then of course you have to think about, well, how do I approximate that by a bunch of straight line paths? How do I turn this into an integral? And what you get if you go through that whole process is exactly this idea of a line integral for computing work. Okay, so we'll leave it there for this week. Um, next time we'll maybe do one or two computational examples and then we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus.